Everybody, welcome back to the Sanctuary Podcast. Uh, I'm Kevin Butterfield. I'm your host for today, and we're so glad to have you with us. Uh, for those who are just joining us, Sanctuary is our young adult community at Black Rock Church that meets on Sunday nights at five o'clock for our main service, and throughout the week in small groups, uh, different activities, retreats, and lots of fun. Uh, so this is our podcast that we get to share with the rest of the world, and we're glad to have you join us. We have different guests that are part of the Sanctuary community or friends of the sanctuary community as a way of encouraging, inspiring, uh, equipping, educating people, and mostly just to, to get them connected with what God is doing in our worlds and in our, the sanctuary community and how that impacts the rest of the world. We really hope that you're inspired by these podcasts and by the people that are a part of them, people that are just like you and me, that are uh, endeavoring to follow Jesus in our everyday lives, to use our gifts, talents, and abilities to give him glory and to change our world. So today we have an amazing guest that I've known probably almost, probably longer than any other guest that we've ever had on. Maybe. It's my pleasure to introduce Carolyn formerly Lubert DeLeo. Hello. Hello, Carolyn. Hi, Kev. So, fun fact, I just alluded to it, that uh, I've probably known you longer than almost any other guest that we've ever had True. on. Um, I met you, Carolyn, at Penny's Diner uh, on, <laughs> <laughs> on Black Rock Turnpike. Um, uh, for those who are from the East Coast, diners are mm -hmm. a staple of our culture yeah. that are open usually 24 hours a day mm -hmm. that serve an extensive library of food. Like every diner, we've ever been to, a, you know, the diners are like 40 pages yeah, long. Yeah, a million things. But I always get breakfast. Because that's <laughs> what they do best, let's be honest. No one's ordering, you know, a filet mignon from a diner. Yeah. But I met Carolyn at Penny's Diner in 1998. She was uh, probably about... Five months old, she mm -hmm. was sitting in a car seat, and uh, her parents, Eric and Annalisa Lubert, um, took us out for dinner after church at Black Rock. So, uh, at I Penny's don't Diner. remember that. Sorry, you don't. It I'm was, sorry, it, it was, was not a very memorable uh, introduction. But yeah, so I've known Carolyn her whole life, and it's I'm so stoked to have you on. Yeah, um, I'm excited to be here. So, uh, Carolyn, um, you've been. In and around Black Rock since 1998, mm -hmm. so yeah, your whole life. My whole life. Your whole life. My whole life. Kids Second ministry. Home. Kids ministry. I didn't love kids ministry when I was little. I'm not gonna lie, but I was in the kids choir, which I loved. Okay. <laughs> Why didn't you like kids ministry? You know, I don't know. I know. <laughs> you do? Yes. <laughs> Carolyn, you were always like an old soul. You were more yeah. mature than. Yeah, you were probably true, like, actually. I can't relate to, you know, these kids who are drooling and picking their nose. I just can't relate yes. to that. So, But I did go to Summer Adventure, and I loved Summer Adventure. What is so, Summer Adventure? Karen? Summer Adventure is our day camp here at Black Rock, which I'm now the director of, which yeah. is kind of fun. Full circle. Full circle. And I did love that. So I loved Kids Choir. I loved Summer Adventure. Okay. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, so it's our day camp that runs basically June, and, uh, July, and August. July, yeah, six weeks. Six weeks. All of July, a little bit of August. Yeah. yeah. So you were a camper. I was a camper. And um, so Carolyn, you've been married for how long now? Mm -hmm. I've been married for like a year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. To a newlywed, I'll say. To Chris DeLeo. Chris DeLeo. So fun fact, also, Chris DeLeo went to summer adventure as a little kid too. He did. He, he did. We also do not remember each other and also not a memorable <laughs> meeting. But we do have we have found pictures that we're both in okay. as campers. And now we're so, married. Yeah. So <laughs> summer camp. Yes. Um, as little kids. Mm -hmm. Went your separate ways. Reunited in high school? At, in high school at Fusion, which is Black Rock's high school ministry. Mm. We were friends in Fusion and then after we graduated, we started dating, and now here we are. Nice. That is awesome. Yeah. And so uh, where'd you go to school, Karen? To college? Yeah. Or yeah. I went to Azusa Pacific University in, in around Los Angeles, Christian school, and I loved it. Yeah. So I was in California for four years. What was your major? Karen? My major was Christian Ministries. I was undeclared for quite a while. Okay. But eventually declared Christian ministries. <laughs> you wait until the last minute. That's awesome. 
<laughs> what do I really want to do right now? Exactly. Uh, well, um, Carolyn, uh, you have worked at BlackRock now for two years? I don't know. It's the COVID years. I can't. It, it all it's blurs absolutely together. absolutely right. Doesn't it? That is so true that the oh, COVID three. years. Zach's telling me three. Three years. It's been three years since yeah. 2020. It was, yeah, because it's when I started. You started like a couple weeks yes, after. Yes, a little after you. Yeah. I started. So um, you had your early exit from your senior year of uh, of college because mm-hmm. of COVID, not because yep. you got kicked out. Uh, everyone got kicked <laughs> everyone. out, right? I did everyone, get kicked out. You did. That's true. <laughs> you have to leave now, all of you. Uh, and then came home, finished mm-hmm. your degree. and Eventually. Um, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> we, we joke with Carolyn because... Um, you had like one test, right? I had to test out of a couple of classes and I waited again to the last minute. I love that. It's but so I good. did. I did finish it. You did. did. Well done. Well done. Uh, so Carolyn was, you did a year long fellowship, which mm-hmm. is a, a fancy name for an internship yep. um, that we did here, um, working in student ministry uh, as a student ministry assistant and mm-hmm. then full time for a year, a little over a, a year. A year, yeah, yeah. Um, but <clears throat> now you've been in a new and exciting yes, role. Tell us about exciting. what your role is here. Yeah, so I'm my official title is community engagement coordinator, um, and community engagement is basically our local outreach, which is which is new. BlackRock's always done local outreach, but mm. it was sort of all lumped together with our global outreach and global missions. Um, so now we've sort of separated the two in order to give them both their own focus and emphasis that they both need, yeah. um, and I get to lead the local side, which is really exciting. So. Um, engaging with the community I around us. I love that. Uh, so they've they've created this new role mm-hmm. that um, was, is like tailor made for you on some yes. level because you yeah. you love that idea. So talk yeah. to me about um, when did you first get excited about you know community outreach and local engagement? Well, first of all, like can maybe just for those of you who go, oh, I think I might know what that is. Sure. What does that actually look like? What yeah. does what are some examples of what BlackRock has done or partners with in community mm-hmm. engagement? Yeah, so a, a big part of it is um, we have you know local partners, which are local nonprofits that are in the area, mostly Fairfield, Bridgeport, um, and you know they're they're meeting the needs of the community, whether it's the hungry, people experience homelessness. But a whole plethora of things, sure. you know, um, reentry ministry for people coming out of addiction or prison or all sorts of things, mm-hmm. <laughs> all the needs of the community. Yeah. Um, we partner with them and support them with volunteers, even financially sometimes. And, um, you know, any any needs that those nonprofits have that pop up where we want to help as much as we can as a church um, to help them with people or whatever they might need. Wow. Yeah. So that's a big part of it. I love that because it's yeah. it's not it's not us trying to to reinvent or cre- mm-hmm. recreate. They're the ministries. experts. They already know what they're doing. Right, and yeah. they've been doing it for a long time. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. Um, so it's us saying, "Hey, how do we support?" Because yeah. a lot of those nonprofits, they feel once they've started uh, and they're hitting their niche, they often feel isolated. Yeah. Um, and so uh, to have not only uh, us as an organization, and really we're not an organization, we're people. Mm-hmm. And so how can we organize our people sure. to support them? Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So that's really cool. like the bulk of it, yeah. Yeah. Is getting involved with them. That's awesome. So mm-hmm. you're you're actually, you're, you're kind of an ambassador. Exactly, um, yeah. Is you're kind of representing Kinda. Yeah. Uh, one community to another uh-huh. and making inroads. Uh, yeah, that we should change that. that ambassador, was, community ambassador. engagement ambassador. Yes, community ambassador, BlackRock ambassador, and then you could have an embassy. <laughs> Your desk can be the, the, embassy. the embassy. I love it. I love that it. would be awesome. Um, so yeah, tell me about how did you? you I know you, and mm-hmm. I know your heart for this. Sure. Where did that come from? How did that start? Yeah. So I lied to you earlier. I did love one part of kids ministry when I was a kid, and that was Missions Week. Mm. I always was excited about Missions Week. We had missionaries come in from all over the world, and I have clear memories of being like five years old and hearing the stories from these missionaries and 
singing in service that like I will go to the ends of the earth with mm. the gospel from like five years old. So I grew up actually with a heart really for global missions for as long as I can remember. Um, and even I've actually been reflecting on this a lot recently, but um, I'm looking back, I realized that it was kind of mostly in college that the Lord started to shift mm. my heart towards more local ministry. Um, I, like I said earlier, I went to a Christian school. So as soon as I got there, um, as a freshman, I knew I had to get out of the Christian bubble because I knew I loved outreach. Mm. I loved helping people. Um, so as quickly as I can, I got involved with the office on campus that did basically what I do now wow. <laughs> and started serving with some of their local partners in the community at tutoring kids, at risk kids, mm. um, some feeding ministries and things like that. Um, and then kept volunteering with that, with that office and ended up working for that office with, they had a global side and a local side, but I worked for their local side cause that's mm. where I volunteered. And, um, still, if you asked me in that time, I would have said my heart was for global missions and I wanted to move to another country and who knows, maybe I will do that someday. But, um, looking back, I realized that it was actually during that time that the Lord was really shifting my heart towards local missions and local outreach. Um, and put me in the perfect role that set me up for where I am now, mm. which I can see in hindsight. Um, but yeah, it really, not that my passion for the world and the ends of the earth has gone away, but I think the Lord has definitely over the past, you know, five, six, seven years has been moving my heart really towards our neighbors mm. that are close by and, and their needs. Well, the interesting thing is, is we've had several um, different guests on uh, mm -hmm. over this the, the last you know few months that have a heart for global outreach yeah. and global impact, um, and so love having you on. But I love hearing mm -hmm. that it started kind of globally, yeah. and then it's moved locally. And I want to hear about that journey. But I, I I'm wondering. So another really interesting uh, thing for you is mm -hmm. that your mom is an immigrant. Your yeah. mom came yeah. from another country. Where'd your Where did your mom? Where was she born? Yes, my mom is from Finland. She was born in Finland and lived there till she was 19. Then she came here as an au pair. Mm. Met my dad. The rest is <laughs> the rest is history. But yes, she just recently, in the past couple of years, became a U.S. citizen. But my whole life, really, she was Finnish citizen, was from Finland, and spent most of her life there. How often did? Because uh, I know you've been there. Mm -hmm. When did you When did you first travel with your mom to, back to Finland? Oh, I probably don't even remember. We used to go more often, but as a kid, we went frequently, probably every year, a couple of years. Do you think that that actually that mm. both experience of having a, you know uh, uh, an expat mom yeah. live in America yeah. uh, as an immigrant, being a second generation? Um, Finnish American. Mm -hmm. um, I am a travel. Finnish citizen, I think, too. Do you have dual I, citizenship? I think I've done all the paperwork. Nice. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Nice. So you really are an ambassador. I am. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure I have dual citizenship. That's awesome. Um, how much did that, do you think, mm -hmm. impact um, your just point of view and heart for mm -hmm. the world? Yeah. Yeah, I think it definitely did impact it. I think, I feel like it just made like, the idea of living in another country less scary or like less crazy because mm. my mom moved from another country. She was from somewhere else. My on my dad's side, my my grandma was from Denmark, and mm. so we also grew up visiting. That's your dad's mom. Yes, yeah. my dad's mom. Um, grew up going there too, and she talked told a lot of stories about growing in De Denmark. So I feel like just the idea of moving to another country mm. was normal in our family or living somewhere else um, was, yeah, not, didn't seem so foreign, <laughs> funny enough. Good word. But no, yes, <laughs> it didn't seem so scary or weird or different to right. move somewhere different. For sure. Um, and I agree with that. Sometimes living, you know, uh, dealing with cross-cultural mm -hmm. people in instances and languages and traditions. Yep. Um, I'm a fellow Scandinavian yes. descendants. Uh, I'm Swedish of Swedish background, which also means I probably have some Norwegian, but Swedes would never admit that um, because of a little rivalry cross Scandinavian. My mom rivalry. is actually, she's done the DNA test and she's 100% finished. Wow. Yeah. In Scandinavian countries, that's pretty rare. Yeah. Because so, they're so small. Yeah. She's know. got nothing else in her blood. Wow. <laughs> um, 
So traveling to Denmark through Scandinavia mm-hmm. and to Finland, hearing different languages and so on, yeah. um, does make the idea of that the world is a smaller place yes, than when you're yeah. just you know exactly. living in one area. Um, but cross-cultural ministries. So how did that heart for impact... And I love the, the idea that whether it's global or whether it's local, it's mm-hmm. really about serving people mm-hmm. in different contexts, different cultures, different um, challenges with, with each of those. Yeah. Um, but you had a heart for um, going to other countries. So uh, give us a couple examples of um, where you've taken not just your heart, your experiences of traveling for family, yeah. but doing it on purpose to impact people. Mm-hmm. Um, when did that start and how did that impact your life? Yeah, so I did, um, you know, as, like we've talked about, I was very involved with Black Rock student ministry growing up and I did a lot of domestic trips with them, but out of state trips. Um, and, you know, that started growing my heart for that sort of service trip type thing. Um, I also, when I was young, I went to Nigeria with my family. Um, and yeah, I was probably, I remember it was after fourth grade. So however, however old you are in fourth grade. <laughs> nine. Not like nine <laughs> is when I went to yeah. Nigeria with my family, which was a very impactful trip just to go to a place that's very different from here. Um and then um, so when I was in college, I spent a month in a closed country. Um, I spent time with a, a missionary family there that was not openly mission, a missionary family mm. there because it was illegal to do missions there. Um, but I got to spend about a month with them um, and sort of helping homeschool their kids while they were um, you know, on the mission field. And that was also really cool to live, again, a very different place, 100% Muslim country. Mm. So very, very different culture and place from here. Um, but yes, just love and still love um, cross anything cross-cultural. Mm. Um, yeah, spending time with people who are just different and, and learning about their culture is just like so fascinating to me. And I, partly, probably because I, I grew up doing it. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Mm-hmm. So tell me about this transition, having, you know, God developing your heart for the globe, uh, for global outreach, for impacting yeah. the world, and then, you know, working in the office at Azusa, getting involved mm-hmm. in local uh, outreach in that uh, law, L.A. area, um, doing different things. Yeah, yeah. What, how did that heart transition happen? Yeah, well, I feel like I've only just recently start, started to realize what was happening during that time. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, again, I knew I, in high school, I had a really big heart for evangelism. Mm. And so I decided to go to a public school for high school. Um, and I I loved that. I felt mm. alive <laughs> when thinking about bringing, sharing the gospel with friends. Um, and yeah, again, I knew going to a Christian college that I, I had to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. So I was just looking for ways to meet non-Christians, really. Mm. Um, but also, I think during that time, the Lord was really developing my heart for service, you know, towards the least of these, yeah. as he says in scripture. Um, yeah, people, you know, I've grown up very privileged. Um, so I think... In high school, I more had the heart for uh, the sharing gospel side of it, but then I think with your peers, yes, exactly, yeah, people who are in your context, exactly, yeah. very similar to me. But then, um, in in college, also, as as I was, sh- the Lord was shifting my heart from global to local. I think He was also growing in me a heart for the service side of it, and and um, yeah, sort of teaching me how the the kingdom of God is, yes, saving us. Jesus came to save us from our sins, right. but he also came to save us from injustice and set us mm-hmm. to people free from um, the physical hardships that they may be facing in this life too. Yeah. Um, and teaching me, yeah, so that was also a transition and a heart shift that I saw during that time too and is is so important to me now. And, and I realized he was setting me up in many ways for mm-hmm. the role I'm, I'm currently in. Yeah. I love how you referred to the least of these, you know, mm-hmm. and you says in scripture in Matthew 25, Jesus is speaking to the crowds saying uh, that when the end of this world will come, uh, that there will be an accountability yeah. that we have for what we do 
this side of heaven yeah. and earth in building mm-hmm. the kingdom of God. And he uses that illustration of separating people's sheep and goats. Mm-hmm. And um, while we know that our salvation isn't based on what we do, sure. Uh, the evidence of our salvation, our, the evidence that we love Jesus, should be lived out in how we treat others. And Jesus uses that frame mm-hmm. uh, framework. He says, "You know, I was mm-hmm. hungry, and you didn't feed me, yeah. or you did feed me, if, you know, as a sheep. Yeah. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was in prison, and you visited, visited me. me yeah. I was sick, and you helped me." Mm-hmm. And he's listing all these things that, and uh, lots of people in our world. Mm-hmm. It's their reality, yeah. either for a season or in their whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that Jesus refer- basically is saying, he uses this positive and negative example to say, I want you to be the people that meet the needs yeah. of the least of these. Mm-hmm. Um, not just for those who look just like you, sound just like mm-hmm. you, you know, live just like you. That's included, and we do that somewhat naturally, not as much as yeah. we should. But to those who look totally different, mm-hmm. live totally different lives. Are, are often, as I've heard you say, like marginalized or on the fringes yep. or easy to miss. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and so uh, having a heart for that um, and, and seeing that, and we've talked about that in some of our other podcasts that we're talking about global outreach, mm-hmm. is that um, we over and over a theme that's come through these podcasts of what's going on in my heart and how it should lead to an overflow of love towards yeah. other people, yeah. wherever you are. So um, you've been feeling this shift in transition. Mm-hmm. Um, not, and I'd love to hear it. Like, I haven't given up on the, the yeah. world. I've just been <laughs> called here yes. to do this. I yeah. don't have to spend an inordinate amount of time, energy, money to travel to the other side of the world mm-hmm. to do what God's called us to do. Here. Yes. Yeah. It's so important. And so, so the Lord's heart, too. Yeah. So, to love our neighbors. For sure. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. For for yourself and for those that you've seen get involved in community engagement, local mm-hmm. outreach, um, serving others, whatever you want, banner you want to put it on, what have you seen happen in people's hearts when they uh, engage in yeah. serving others? Yeah. Well, I think the best scenarios of people when they really fall in love with serving and and with meeting people in these sort of contexts is is the more relational the better yeah. <laughs> when you really get to know the people that you're serving it's almost like addicting you're like it's it's not i'm just going to give up my time and yeah. serve it's like a highlight of the week mm-hmm. that i get to go see this friend i've made or these friends i've made um and yeah, the more relational it is, um, and the more you get to really know the people that you are serving with your time, the way more rewarding it is too. Mm-hmm. Um, in that, it, yeah, it starts to really change you and becomes more than just oh, I got to give up a couple hours of my week, sure. and and becomes actually a part of your life. That, so it's more than yeah. just ticking a box to make exactly. yourself feel good yeah. or do the right thing, and also. Uh, what I hear you saying too is that relational side, it breaks down this idea of us in them. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's heart mm-hmm. connection. Exactly. Um, which is so, because, you know, nobody wants to be treated like a them. Right. They right. want to be treated like a person. Yes. And that's relational. Yeah. So, yeah, when, when, especially when that's in the mix, a relational piece, yeah, like I, I've talked to so many people, and myself included, where it's, it becomes the highlight of your week and not a part of your week that you're giving up. It becomes, um, something that changes your perspective on the world and, and how people even close to us miles down the just a few miles down the road live differently and, and seeing the world through their eyes. And, um, it, it changes your life. Not to, that sounds cliche and dramatic, but it yeah, does. It does. Yeah. Changes your paradigms, your perspectives. Mm-hmm. You see the world differently. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it's easy to, to live in ideologies yeah. um, and be idealistic, either on a political spectrum mm-hmm. or a viewpoint of life spectrum, sometimes even a feeling of safety spectrum, you know, uh, you know, to be comfortable in mm-hmm. our bubbles and serving other people across culturally, even in our own neighborhoods, changes that yeah. those thoughts. It's easy to have an ideal mm-hmm. Um, until you start doing it and then yeah. go, wow, these are a lot, it's a lot more nuanced and personal and relational yeah. than I ever thought it was. Yeah. And I think not to overgeneralize, cause I know this is not true of everybody, but Gen Z's and millennial, we're really good at talking about the ideal. We're mm. good at speaking posting on Instagram and, 
and dreaming of how the world should be, I'm not convinced that we're always good at actually going to get our hands dirty yeah. and and doing the hard work that it takes to actually see those things come to fruition and and um, yeah, actually get involved in a very personal way. Right. Beyond a uh, promotional or yes. a, you yeah. know, something to post online sure. or, you know, an event, mm-hmm. but make it a lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so, um, Carolyn, can you give me some examples of opportunities that people listening to this? Because I, I, one thing that mm-hmm. does excite me about Gen Z is they're, they do, they're, I see a heart yeah. to do something. Um, but they don't always know what to do where or to how start. to do or where yeah. to start. Exactly. Mm-hmm. How do I start this? I want to do something, but what do I do? Yeah. So can you give us examples of some things that um, we do in partnering with mm-hmm. our local ministries that people can start getting involved? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the best way is, is like we talked about, the our partners are the experts. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the really the best way to get involved is to volunteer with them, which um, I am happy to connect you with them because <laughs> I know it can be intimidating to just find them on your own. Right, right. Um, but yes, all of our local partners need volunteers. They rely on volunteers. Um, and even this is where we're hoping to grow as community engagement Again, this is a new ministry, mm-hmm. so as we continue to grow, we're, we're looking for partners that are really volunteer-based because we want to plug people here at BlackRock in with them um, serving. So there are plenty of places to give your time on a weekly, monthly basis. Um, and yeah, I'm the, I'm the person to connect you with them. Okay, so <laughs> how do people get connected yes. to you, Carolyn, uh, to find out about the opportunities? Yes, so the way to get connected is... Um, Best way is just to get on my email list for okay. community engagement. Sounds boring, but it's the best way. Um, but uh, if you go to blackrock.org, blackrock.org. Sl- slash serve local, pretty easy to remember. Pretty easy to remember. Black- we'll, and we'll list it in the, in the show notes. Yes. Blackrock.org slash serve local. There's a button right on top there that says something along the lines of join the email list or something like Great. that. So then they get an email list of opportunities yes. that are happening regularly yes. with one of our partners. Mm-hmm. So yes, they're all kind of post where the biggest needs are, who's maybe has a one-time event coming up mm-hmm. that you can start and try something out with an organization or, you know, the list can go on and on, but um, that's kind of the best way. And then also when you give me your email, you also kind of fill out a form there um, that'll let me reach out to you individually to see how you speak each person specifically wants to serve. That's awesome. And I can reach out to you and help you connect. Great. So, so uh, people may not know this listening to, they may mm-hmm. be listening months from now sure. or years from now, but tonight is the eve of Thanksgiving. Yeah. So um, tell us uh, one thing that we did. Can you talk about blessing bags? Yeah. So yeah, BlackRock's been doing blessing bags for a while. As I don't know how long years. exactly, but yeah, years for sure. Um, but yeah, we... I, again, just kind of hopped on what we've been doing in the past. Um, So I'm definitely not the creator of Blessing Bags. (laughs) But um, we send people from our congregation here at Black Rock out with uh, a shopping list of Thanksgiving items, food items, and a shopping bag. And they go um, and fill it up at the grocery store and bring it back, including a gift card for a turkey or something Mm. or whatever people want to use it for. and it's like a Thanksgiving meal in a bag for a family. That's awesome. And then we're able to hand those out. Um, a lot of them go to our local partners, mm. actually. Um, some people deliver to individual families and homes. Um, but yeah, that's a really exciting way. We're somewhere around 1,000 bags are handed out. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a great way to just say, here's a Thanksgiving meal in a bag. If, if money is tight this year, here's yeah. a way we can bless you. And money is tight this yes. year. It, it yes. seems like getting tighter too that, you know, <laughs> yeah. greater opportunity uh, mm-hmm. where there's a greater need that's there. Um, talk to us about two other opp- opportunities to highlight. Yeah. Um, what is Christmas Blitz? Yeah. And then Christmas Store and how that all works. Yes. I love the Christmas story. I've been going, so Urban Impact is one of our partners. They work with um, mostly youth, but fam- youth and families in PT Barnum, which is a government housing complex in Bridgeport. Um, they do tutoring and mentoring and Bible studies and all sorts of things. But every year at Christmas, um, they host a Christmas store for the families that they serve um, to shop for Christmas gifts for their kids at a very, very discounted rate. Mm. <laughs> um, so we, 
at Black Rock and beyond <laughs> um, buy toys for this store um, so we can fill up the store with toys um, so then parents can shop. Um, and it's so fun. I've been going because it falls around Christmas. So even throughout college, I would come and go to the Christmas store every year. That's awesome. Because I love it. It's so much fun. fun. Um, but yeah, Sanctuary does this every year. Sanctuary takes a night off of normal Sanctuary and goes shopping to buy toys to stock the Christmas store. Um, and it's a really cool way to, instead of just giving them the gifts, um, the parents are able to still um, take some ownership and they get to pick out what they want yeah. to get their kids. Um, they still uh, have a small investment in it to really take ownership over it. And we get to make the parents the heroes of yeah, their families. That's great. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, and I, I love um, the Christmas store. I love the Christmas Blitz. Um, I'm also really proud of the fact that that whole, even urban impact, even what's happened in PT and Christmas, started at Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Started um, almost 20 years ago when some young adults felt called yeah. to do something. It started actually, this is really cool, it started with uh, us partnering with Bridgeport Rescue Mission, mm -hmm. one of our uh, local partners. They had a mobile soup truck and we they used to go into the PT section every Wednesday night yeah. and we used to uh, volunteer to, to serve food. And then we started building relationships with people right in front of the school. Uh, it's a Longfellow school, um, uh, the local school there. Yeah. Um, and we started then branching out. So we did the mobile f uh, food truck. Mm -hmm. Then we started playing basketball on Wednesday nights down at the local mm -hmm. courts, again, to build relationships, to They're connect. They're still doing that. It was yeah. just amazing. Yeah. Then, um, then they said, well, let's do something for the kids. So they started running like what we do for Thrive and Fusion. Mm -hmm. We started working with students at the school yeah. with local partners. Then it became, we partnered with Janet Ortiz, who's mm -hmm. still one yep. of our, our local partners, in providing presents. And the same thing, you know, it just snowballed. And now yeah. it's, you know, I love the fact that it started with a couple young adults mm -hmm. who said, let's do something. Let's do something locally. And yeah. then it's continuing to evolve. Now our whole yeah. church is involved. We have multiple awesome. local partners. Mm -hmm. um, and I love just the vibe of walking into the Christmas store oh, so and fun. people are picking out presents. Yeah. And... I love that fact that we're going, hey, we're, we, we're, we want, we're giving, we're empowering you by letting you mm -hmm. invest in this, not just giving it away, mm -hmm. but to let the parents be the heroes. Yeah. Which is so cool. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So um, you've already said, like, if, if people want to get involved, sign up on the email list, mm -hmm. see opportunities, fill out a form uh, to connect with them. Yes. Um, there is, can I share one more? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There is um, another option if you're like, this sounds interesting. I have no idea which partner I would want to serve with. I don't know where to start. Or maybe you have an inconsistent schedule and can't commit to something on a regular basis. Mm. Um, another option of what we do is um, once a month, it's always the second Saturday of the month, um, we have some sort of one-time serving event where it's it's you're not signing up to be there every week. You're not signing up to be there every month. You just can show up whenever mm -hmm. you're available on the second Saturday of a month. Um, it's almost always meeting here at 9 a.m. We meet at Black Rock and then we go to wherever we're going. Um, but again, if you get on that email list, you'll get all the details for those every month. That's great. <laughs> but that's a really easy way to start if you don't know where to start um, to just show up on a Saturday and, and serve with us. Um, like in December, if if you're listening in real time yes. <laughs> when this is released, we're going to homes all over Fairfield and Bridgeport and handing out groceries and Christmas trees. And we're even doing painting in one nice. home. It's a really easy way to get started. Um, and so did you say, wh what day is it every month? Yes, yeah, always the second Saturday second of the month. Second Saturday of the month. Mm -hmm. Usually meeting here at Black Rock. Meeting here at, at 9, 9 a.m. Yes. Uh, yeah. And That's just cool. show up, no RSVP, just, really, just be just here. Really, cool. That's really cool. Young yes. adults will love that. <laughs> um, I, I, and I, I would encourage people, they can show up individually, mm -hmm. but they can also come with a, some friends. Yeah. I think it would be great for, you know, we have awesome small groups here mm -hmm. for people to come as a small group. Um, do it together. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and if, yeah, if you want to serve with your small group, I mean, I'm always open to creative ideas. If you have a special skill you want to use in a serving capacity, if, yeah, you want to serve with your small group, just 
find me and I'd love to set you up with wherever there's a need. Yay. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Carolyn, so yeah. much. I, I think this is such an important um, step for people to take in their spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because they connect with the heart of God, and we just feel the pleasure of the Lord when we're serving yeah. Him uh -huh. um, and reflecting His love towards us. It's such a big shout of thank, thank mm -hmm. you, Lord, for impacting my life that I want to impact yeah. uh, other people. It's really cool. Uh, we didn't talk about this in our pre-meeting, so I'm, oh, I'm going to surprise you with this. Um, can you do me a favor? Yeah. We, we often close uh, these times with yeah. our guest looking right into this camera okay. over here and just releasing a blessing mm -hmm. um, towards whatever it is that God's put on their life yeah. and in their heart. So if you would do that, Karen, sure. that would be great. Look in yeah. that camera uh, and release a blessing to whoever's listening yes. towards community engagement. Yeah. To whoever is listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, I bless you with the freedom that is found in Christ Jesus, um, freedom that will overflow out of you and into the lives of our neighbors and the people around us. Um, freedom um, that comes only through Christ and his death and resurrection. Um, I bless you with an abundance of it. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen, That's amen. awesome. Thanks, Carolyn, so much for sharing. Thanks for your heart. We look forward to connecting uh, with you yeah. and what God's doing here and beyond. So thanks again. Awesome. It's great thanks, to be Kev. here. And thanks, you guys, for joining us on this podcast. We always love having you here. We'd love to have you hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button. Please share these because they're such an encouragement to people and thought-provoking. So the more you can share, the better it is. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not looking for uh, popularity. What we're looking for is impact. So we'd love to have you share these with people that uh, you think would be encouraged and inspired by these podcasts. So if you want to also send an encouraging comment um, below, that would be fantastic. And hope you guys have great holidays and bless you. Uh, if you want to join us at Sanctuary, Sunday nights, five o'clock and hope to see you soon.